Welcome to the What's New video for version 10.5 of Aspire. Well, we're going to give you an overview of all the new and improved features that we've added in this release. This video is intended for existing Aspire customers who have recently upgraded to the latest version and only includes details of the incremental changes and enhancements to the previous version of the software. This video is broadly divided into five sections, focusing on the main areas of Aspire, drawing, 3D assembly, modeling, toolpaths, and general items. In each section, we'll give you an overview, highlighting brand new tools and a summary of enhancements and extensions to existing tools that you should already be familiar with, along with minor changes that have been made, usually in response to specific customer feedback to improve workflow and fix problems that have come to light since the previous release. So let's get started. 10.5 introduces enhancements to the way that we draw and edit vectors. When working with overlapping vectors, we've now made it easier than ever to trim intersecting vectors at the drag of your mouse. Simply select the interactive trim tool and hold the left mouse key down whilst dragging your mouse through the vector intersections that you want to remove meaning you no longer have to click on each individual span, making the process much smoother. We've also made it easier to identify when you attempt to trim grouped vectors, where the grouped vectors highlight themselves, prompting you to ungroup the vectors to perform the intended trim. We've introduced the ability to draw Bezier's within the Draw Polyline tool, making the overall drawing process much quicker with the ability to create varying spans all from within one tool. Simply click and drag the Bezier handle to create the smooth curve that you desire. To return to the standard straight line, simply press the S key on the keyboard. The way that we create radius internal and external corners has been vastly improved to allow you to dynamically set the radii of the corners in the 2D view. Simply go into the Draw Rectangle tool and select whether you want to have a radius internal or external corner. Set your rectangle position and size or simply draw it out in the 2D view. Once drawn out, you'll be presented with green handles on each corner of the shape, or you can simply take just one of those handles and drag it to alter the radius of all the corners at the same time. And with each drag move, the radius value in the form will automatically update telling you what the radius is. As you continue dragging to decrease the radius, there will become a point where your radius will then switch to an internal radius and the form will be updated to reflect that. And these improvements make it much easier to visually set your corner radius when creating rectangles. We've made some enhancements to the way we handle some options with 3D items. Where level clipping is concerned, we've made some improvements to the overall workflow. It is now much easier to adjust your clipping boundary and change how your model is clipped. Take this example. My composite model consists of two levels, one containing the plaque and one containing this Labrador. To clip away everything outside of this vector, I can select the vector, then go to the level that contains the Labrador, right click on that level and select the clipping option and press apply. Now my model is clipped to this vector. Now let's say I wanted to change the size of the overall model and make that smaller. In order for me to update the level effect, I can just right click on the level and use the option update, where it updates my clipped model to the new smaller ellipse that we have here, making for a much more straightforward workflow. And to remove this effect, I can simply click remove and the software will update that accordingly. Now 
When working with 3D items in a double-sided job, you can now copy and move components to the other side directly from the 3D view. Simply right click on your component and use the option copy or move to the other side and the software will do just that, ensuring for a much quicker workflow all directly from within the 3D view. Aspire has seen some modeling enhancements where we've added in various new modeling options. In the create shape form, we've added in two brand new shape profiles to increase the profile selection that is available, where you have the option to create a concave profile and an S shape smooth profile. Both of these profiles make for the easy creation of dishes or raise shields in conjunction with the limit to height option. We've added a new final height option from within the create shape form. This option is called blend to inner vectors. This new option enables you to create a shape where the selected profile blends from the outer contour to the inner contour where it's closed off with a flat surface at a height that you specify within the form, allowing you to create some really interesting shapes at the click of a button. Simply select your two vectors and choose the shape profile that you wish to use and select the option blend to inner vectors and the resulting model will be in the form of the selected profile where it blends from the outer to the inner shape. Now we're going to explore the vast amount of new and enhanced features that we've added to the software in relation to toolpaths. We've introduced a brand new toolpath to our selection. This is the Thread Millen toolpath enabling you to machine holes for standard size screws in metals and acrylics, and is also useful for the creation of decorative wood fasteners. This toolpath has the option to create both internal and external threads. For example, if you wanted to create a cavity to screw something into, or if you wanted to create an exterior thread on something like a bolt. To accommodate this new toolpath, we've added two new tool types to the tool database, a single thread mill and a multi-thread mill, where you can select them based on the application you want to use. Simply select your tool type and enter your cutting depths. Next, apply the thread definition information detailing the pitch, diameter and fit tolerance of your thread, where you can select a pitch preset from the drop-down list of standard pitch types. Then select whether you want to create an internal or external thread type, and finally, your thread and cut directions, and you're good to go. To learn more about this toolpath, then please refer to the in-depth thread milling tutorial guide and documentation. In this release, we have introduced a second new toolpath, the chamfer toolpath. This toolpath allows you to easily create chamfers using V-bits or bullnose tools to create decorative edges and is also a great way to create countersunk holes. Let's take a closer look at this new toolpath. As you can see, the form is laid out in the same fashion as existing toolpaths, with cutting depths and tool selection at the top. Then we have options relating specifically to the chamfer that we want to create. Let's say I wanted to create a chamfered plaque using this vector and a 60 degree V-bit tool. Simply select the vector you want to chamfer along with the tool that you wish to use. Then all you need to do is assign the width or cut depth and the software will automatically update the alternate field according to the entered parameters. Next up, choose your chamfer type, whether you want your chamfer on the inside or on the outside. When switching between the different options, the 2D view is constantly updating which direction we are creating the chamfer, making it easy for us to visualise the outcome. Then we have the option to choose whether the chamfer slopes down from the vector or slopes up from the vector. Again, with each switch, 
the 2D view updates to visualise the end result. If you want to create a chamfer but don't have the corresponding angled tool, that's not a problem. You can use the ball nose tool to create the angle that you desire and you can have a look at an example of this in the chamfer toolpath guide tutorial. This toolpath is also useful in creating countersunk holes. For example, if we wanted to create hanging holes for this door sign, we can do so by first drilling the holes out accordingly and then using the chamfer toolpath, we can create the chamfer using a V-bit tool, where we set the width to the radius of the circles and to machine this in a single pass, we can adjust the pass depth of the tool so that it's slightly larger than the cut depth specified, ensuring for very efficient countersinking. To learn more about this toolpath, please refer to the Chamfer Toolpath Guide tutorial. The Pocket Toolpath now supports multiple clearance tools for more efficient area clearance. Using multiple tools means that you can use a much larger clearance tool for clearing moderately large areas, as well as progressively smaller tools to remove smaller areas making this process as efficient as possible. Simply select as many or as little tools desired to clear out the area required. The largest tool in the list will always display first and will remove as much material as it can and any subsequent tools that follow will only machine areas where the previous tools could not fit. We've also included this feature in the female pocket inlay toolpath. And so, using multiple tools with this strategy can help shorten machining times and improve the life of your tools. We've made improvements to the functionality of toolpath groups, making them much more useful. We've made it more convenient to create toolpath groups where you can create them from an empty list to help start your organisation of your toolpaths right from the get-go. Simply right-click within the toolpath list and use the option to create an empty group, where newly created toolpaths will be added to this group. We've also added the ability to create groups from visible toolpaths in the list, which is useful when you want to organise your toolpaths by different materials used, tool types, or grouping the toolpaths by part. However you like to organise your toolpaths, we've made it very easy to do. Let's say I want to organise my toolpaths by tool. I can make all the relevant toolpaths visible and right click and use the option Group Visible, ensuring for a better workflow when grouping tools together. We have also included the ability to save groups within a toolpath template, ensuring that jobs you create at a later date get done quicker now that they're organised the way that you want them. On top of this, we can also toolpath preview a group by highlighting the group and using the preview selected toolpath option. You can also save toolpath groups by using the option save selected toolpath where it will list all the toolpaths in the group and save them to one file. Ten point five sees some nice enhancements made to automatic tab placement in the profile toolpath, where it will default to placing tabs where it can avoid corners and curved regions for much better placement, minimising the need for manual adjustment. 10.5 We've made it easier than ever to save out your toolpaths. Now you have the ability to output multiple visible toolpaths to separate files in just one click, along with the ability to output toolpaths together where possible, for instance if some of them were using the same tool. Take this file, we have four toolpaths, I can simply use the option to save visible toolpaths to multiple files and the software will save them all out individually at the click of one button. Give the toolpaths a save out name, for example Vectorphone, and the software will append the toolpath name and type making it easy for you to identify the files and ultimately the process saves us a lot of time. 
If we have toolpaths in the tree that use the same tool, then we can make use of the group where possible feature. And so the software will group toolpaths using the same tool to one saved file. If, however, there is a toolpath using a different tool in between two toolpaths which use the same tool, then the toolpaths which use the same tool cannot be combined, ensuring that the software respects your order of machining and so it will separate them accordingly. In the profile toolpath, we have stopped repeated retracts and plunges when we profile on open vectors, where the cut direction doesn't matter ultimately helping to reduce machining times and making the whole process more efficient. We have optimised the link up moves between open contours when the cutting direction doesn't matter, allowing for more efficient machining with reduced machining times. For ease of use, we've added the ability to copy tools in the tool database by simply selecting the tool along with the control key on your keyboard where you can drag your new tool into position ready for editing. We've made a minor enhancement to the way that we preview the moulding toolpath in the 2D view where we are now able to visualise the clearance toolpath as well as the finish. We have now added in a further right click option to calculate all visible toolpaths, allowing you to update only the toolpaths required. Version 10.5 now gives us the ability to save a merged toolpath within a toolpath template, ensuring that all template jobs that you create retain the measures originally set out, enabling you to get the next job done efficiently. 10.5 introduces improvements with the way that we work. In this release, we have added a new feature whereby you're able to save your commonly used file settings such as job sizes, geometry and toolpaths as a job template, which is really useful in two case scenarios. For example, if you commonly work with different sheet thicknesses, you can save these as templates to open up without having to make any adjustments to the job setup form. And another example could be if you were creating a job that is interchangeable with each customer order, that could be set up as a template where you would only need to change the customizable parts, ultimately saving you time and money.